Hi guys, welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install your power pedal kit in the new Talaria XXX. Parts that you will receive with your kit depending on the version you buy. Um, if you bought the pedal kit you will receive our new spindle with screws on the ends instead of, um, of nuts. And they do have an internal thread that it's better protected. You will have a left side bracket, two bushings two zip ties, a right side bracket, and if you bought the pedals and the cranks, they will come with your kit. Also, if you bought the power pedal kit, then you will have um, this chain, free wheel hub, the free wheel and the split sprocket, and this cable will come with all kits. It's the uh, side stand sensor extension cable. We need to begin by removing the bash guard, so it has four screws two on the top and two on the bottom so we remove this keep the screen in a safe place now we remove the other side okay now there's two more screws on the bottom so then we remove this screw on this side. We can remove just on one side, it should be enough. Okay. Now we'll remove this cover and all of this is for us to be able to remove the side stand sensor um, safely in order to protect it and not damage it. Okay, so here we have five screws that we need to remove. Okay, keep the screws in a safe place. And now we need to search for the cable of the side stand sensor, which starts over here. And you can follow the cable. There might be some zip ties that you need to cut. There's one here on this on this part here. So make sure you cut the zip ties um, so you can trace the cable. Here and here we have the connector. It's a three pin triangular connector. Okay, so we remove the connector. Now we have the side stand cable free. You can take it out. Start pulling it from here. Careful. Okay, and now you have your side stand cable free. Now we're going to remove the side stand, but for that we need to put the bike on a stool or on something that can support it, so we can um, remove the side bracket. Okay, so now I put the bike on a stool. Just make sure that you leave enough space here for you to be able to remove the side bracket and the side stand. Okay, so take your six millimeter wrench and start on tightening. Sometimes um, these screws come very tight and so you need to use some WD-40 um, that goes into the screw's threads so it'll help you loosen the screw. Having this long Allen wrench helps with the torque also. As we can do more lever. Ok, 
Okay. One. I need to hold the side bracket for the screw to come loose. Okay. There we go. And we, now we need to remove the sensor. We'll do it in a bit. Now we remove the bracket on the other side. We can put the screw there. Now we're going to remove the side stand sensor. Please check that the sensor is flushed against this flat surface over here. And to loosen it, we need to remove the jam nut. Uh, you can take a small spanner wrench or something similar. Um, that will give you enough space. Okay. Here. Okay, there we go. Okay, and to remove the sensor, it might be a little bit tight. So you can take some pliers and with a lot of caution not to damage the sensor, you can start turning it careful with the with the thread so you can start losing it okay now we can finish removing it with our hand okay there we go now we're going to remove the side stand now we're going to loosen this nut. You can take a small spanner wrench or you can take a larger wrench. Um, you can just start by removing this nut. This is a nylock nut, so it's, so it's harder to remove. Or you can take just a ratchet with a socket. easier for you now we're going to disassemble the side stand so first we need to loosen this screw over here we take our six millimeter wrench and start loosening okay so we need to take out this screw Okay, and now we can just move the side stand and disassemble. Now we need to remove this pin because we're going to need it um, for the new part. So we can loosen this pin. Okay. So now we take our left bracket and take the pin we removed from the previous part and we install it over here careful not to scratch the new part
Okay. There we go. Now we take the side stand and slide it on. Take the side stand screw and tighten it. Do not tighten it too much so so the side stand can move um, freely. Well, not freely, but so the side stand can move properly because if you tighten it too much, uh, then the side stand it will be very hard to move. So just tighten it a little bit. Test that the side stand can move. Okay. Now go to the other side and put on the safety nut, the nylock nut. To install the side stand spring, now take the part, take the short hook and put it on over here. Now take a long screwdriver and put the, the screwdriver through here. And now you can do some lever here, like this. Okay, now you can just take out the screw. And there you go. We have the side the the side stand spring all set. Now, if you want to install the side stand sensor, the sensor must be touching or really close to this metal point here on the side stand, so you can measure it and you can move the um, jam nut backwards until it fits. Until the sensor is flushed against this metal point and it is in the middle of these two holes. Once you've achieved that, then you can put this uh, zip ties in through these two holes and have them coming out on this side again. both of them okay so you should see something like this then you will take your side stand sensor and put the jam nut in between then you can raise the side stand okay once you're here you can tighten the zip ties Tighten one first, then the other one. Then correctly tighten the zip tie. Okay, there we go, now we cut the, the excess, the excess of the zip tie. Okay, now we take down the side stand sensor and see that it's really close, it's, now it's supposed to work. Now to install the side stand we need the side stand and this bushing uh, that we need to place here on the lower screw. Now we take one screw and have the bushing like this and just slightly put some threads in there and then we take the second one, the upper screw. And then we can tighten these screws, but not totally, because we need them uh, loose to tighten the chain afterwards. So, 
we just have them sitting there slightly okay now see it's not fixed okay now we're going to install this split sprocket we need to remove these screws we use a four millimeter allen wrench and we also need a three millimeter allen wrench to loosen this set screw here Okay, so we remove these screws on both sides. Okay, on the other side. Perfect. Now we take the bottom part of the split sprocket, not this one, but this one, and we put it facing this way. So the sprocket is facing to the left side of the bike and we put the split sprocket over the jack shaft. Now we take the other half and match the sprocket and the holes. Okay, now we take one screw and match it here. Okay, now we take the other one. We match it. Okay. And the position of the split sprocket is almost on the middle of the bike. doesn't have to be precise now we need to tighten the screws if you need to f get a better position you can spin the rear wheel and that'll help you get the correct position for the screw Okay, and finally, we tighten the set screw for extra caution. Okay. Now we're going to install the spindle. Now we have a new crank fixing system. We are using bolts. These are standard and can be easily available at any bicycle store. Um, and if you see, they also have the incorporated Loctite. So this is a, a great improvement. Okay. Now um, we take the collars that come with the spindle the spindle has one side, this one that has a dimple, that should be facing or placed on the left side bracket. Um, if you bought the power pedal kit which comes with the freewheel, then please put the freewheel in now. It should be facing this side, then you put the left side on, sorry I forgot to put the the color on so you should put one color on between this dimple and the freewheel hub now put the spindle through the bearing just until the dimple is there here you go there it is now slide the color over there and then we slide on the other color here okay now to install the right side bracket, we remove the screws, get the right side bracket here, put the spindle inside, then we take this bushing, put it here between the bracket 
and the chassis and take this screw over there and okay and just tighten it there slightly take the second screw and have it there now we're going to tighten these screws not totally because we need to fix the chain first This bushing that we placed over here, it's extremely important to have it there because it'll maintain the brackets uh, position. Okay, not totally. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to install the right side um, pedal and crank. Please check that it says right. Now take the pedals. If you if you got this pedal, it should say right R over here. On the other pedals, it says it over here. So you take the right pedal and the right crank and start tightening the thread. I suggest you do it by hand once you've tested it's in the correct position then you can use the wrench or the key the allen key and tighten it properly okay now we put the crank here on the spindle Okay, and take our screw and the eight millimeter wrench. and tighten it very well okay then you can try feeling the cap there and now we have the right side bracket uh, completely in, sorry the right side crank and pedals installed now let's go to the other side okay so now we're going to, to do the same thing with the right side left sorry left side pedal so we take the left side crank left side pedal and we start doing the thread by hand please start by hand it'll make sure that you don't damage the thread this pedal has a left hand thread so it tightens counterclockwise so here we go okay okay now we put it now we slide it over the spindle make sure it's 100 degrees offset it with the other crank okay now there we go we take our screw and our eight millimeter wrench this this screw does have a standard right hand thread okay so 
So we finish tightening. Okay, so now it's completely tightened. Okay, now you need to check that the gap between the chassis and the and the crank, I mean this the spindle that you can see there, it's almost the same as you can see on the other side. There. Yeah, they're almost the same at this time. If not, you need to um, reposition the spindle by hitting it slightly with a rubber mallet or similar. Once you have um, made sure that the that the position is the correct one for the spindle, then you need to look for the sorry, you need to look for the dimple that we have over there. Put it facing downwards like this and match this screw with the dimple on the spindle so you can hold the spindle's position. There we go. Now the screw is going into the, the dimple. Okay. Do not over tighten. And now we need to fix the screw on the right side. I'm gonna remove it and put on a little bit of Loctite. There's no flat spot or dimple on this side as this set screws are cup point set screws. They, they will bite into the, into the spindle Okay, so I take this head screw and put on a little bit of Loctite. Oh, too much. Then we put it in here. Then we flush the collar against the sides and against the right bracket. Once the collar is flush there, we can fix the position. Tighten the set screw. There we go, and now we have a fixed spindle position. Okay, now we're going to install the chain. Now, to open the chain, you take some pliers. Okay, now we open the chain, remove the link, remove the master link. And now we take the chain and put it over the split sprocket. You can put it just over there and spin the rear wheel and that'll help you. And now you can um, slide the free wheel here and you can lift the kit until you can close the chain, okay? Um, in case you're not able to fit it, then you need to loosen both side brackets and lift the kit until the chain closes. Okay, so now we 
take the master link and close the chain. Then we put on the other link. Like this. And now we take the clip or the pin and you need to make sure that the pin is facing the opposite movement direction so it should be open downwards here now we slide it on okay and there we have a closed chain please note that we haven't tightened the um, the free wheel yet so you can you can spin the pedals backwards or like this there they spin freely and now we're gonna use the throttle um, to align the free wheel okay now I've turned on the bike make sure you can spin the pedals freely and we start by accelerating very slightly and then we accelerate for a little while and that will help us um, have the free wheel get self aligned now there is a a flat spot on the spindle make sure you can see it then you can spin the fuel hub slightly and we sorry I had, I had removed this screw previously um, we put some Loctite on it and we tighten it right there on the flat spot oh sorry There we go. And this is a very important step because it'll make sure that your uh, chain is well aligned and you won't have any issues. This will guarantee thousands of miles with the same chain. Okay, now we tie in the other one, we can also take it out, put on some blue Loctite, there we go, these are also cup point, cup point set screws. Okay. Okay, once you've tightened both screws, then the chain should be aligned. Now we need to um, fix the chain tension. So now we can fix the side brackets. Okay, now to tighten the chain, I'm gonna remove the screw. Put on some blue Loctite. Okay, do not tighten it totally, just there a little bit. Now this one. Put on some blue Loctite. Make sure the bushing's still there, um, that it hasn't fallen off. Okay. Now to tighten the chain, make sure it's not very tight because otherwise you'll hear some grinding noises. So you can just press here 
and lift the chain a little bit and then you can start tightening these screws okay now the other one make sure you give them the proper torque because this will maintain your chain tension here it's how it's uh, tension right now it's rather loose it's okay um, because if not when you're standing up and you didn't tighten these screws properly uh, you can make the chain get more tension because of your weight you're gonna be pushing this spindle downwards and tightening the chain um, and then you can start hearing some noises so this step is very important okay so same procedure take out the, the screw and put on some blue loctite here okay okay now we not do not com tighten it completely just have it there a little bit okay now let's do it with the other one make sure the bushing doesn't fall off put on some blue loctite okay there we go now put the screw back in Okay, now we can start by fixing this one again. Put the press the chain a little bit so you lift it, start tightening, and it's better. To, okay, now it's better to have the chain a little bit loose like this, should be like this. It's okay, and now we can start tightening the second one and make sure you give the proper torque again okay now we have our kit installed we just need to organize things there we go you can pedal backwards nothing will happen perfect okay now you take the um, side stand sensor cable if you did decide to install it and connect it to the extension over there then we're gonna put the cable in through the oh sorry we're gonna put the cable in through the um, bash guard right here on the side and then we're gonna put this cable here and we're gonna look for the uh, previous side stand connector which is over here and then we can connect it over here okay and now we have the side stand connected now we, now we need to organize make things tidy here okay and now we're gonna install again the bash guard please remember to install the lower bolts the bolts that come over here they need to be installed not completely so you need to match all three holes before tightening them completely okay so remember to match this hole
Okay, make sure the cable is loose, that it's not trapped or anything. It should be able to move freely. Do not tighten the lower screw completely so you can move the bash part. Okay, now we're going to match the other holes. Okay, this one's matched. Now the other one. Okay, and once they are all matched, then you can tighten them down completely. Okay, we're done there. Now we're going to fix this cover. I need to put the cables in. Okay, we can match this top screw first. Now this one, sorry. This top screw was first, now this one. Not totally. The other one here. And finally, this lower one. Okay, now we can disconnect the final torque. Then this one. Then this one. Then the two upper ones. These are very low torque screws. Okay, and now we have completely assembled the bike. So there you go. Now we have our pedal or power pedal kit installed.